So then we break from the story for a second. So Cut mentions that he can tell there's a lot of tension among the Autobots, and as he's saying this, Sunstreaker goes off into this little, like, secluded place, and Sideswipe follows him there, and Sideswipe's like, we need to talk. Now, before I go on, I just want to say that this is kind of interesting because earlier on in the series, like way earlier on, um, back when Escalation happened, during Escalation, Sunstreaker got kidnapped by the Machination, um, and Sideswipe, who was in Stormbringer at the time, um, found out and was and just desperately wanted to go and find Sunstreaker, and everyone was like, no, we can't. I think, um, Side I think Sideswipe's, um, leader was Hound at that point. Hound's like, no, we're not gonna go find Sunstreaker right now. And so we have these, ser we have all of this Sideswipe wanting to go f save Sunstreaker, and then in Spotlight Sideswipe, which was the end of the Revelation series, he gets to Earth, and is all, I have to find Sunstreaker, but it's not because they're brothers. Um, it's just because Sunstreaker was... Um, Sideswipe's, like, training officer or something, and Sideswipe wanted to prove that he was better than him, basically. Um, but then after a while, um, Sideswipe's just like, no, I'm not gonna find him, and he leaves. Now, I understand that that kind of came out of the series being cut short, but still, that's pretty brutal. Um, and it's interesting that now Sideswipe wants to talk to Sunstreaker so badly. Sideswipe is talking to Sunstreaker, and Sunstreaker's like, dude, you need to stop following me around. And Sideswipe says, you and Ironhide need to stop. And he's talking about them pushing the whole Mirage as a traitor thing. Um, and then he says, you know, Sunstreaker, you've changed. And Sideswipe says, you know, I can't imagine what it must have been like, everything they did to you. And we get a nice little page that kind of just sums up what happened to Sunstreaker in... Um, escalation and forward, but Sunstreaker is having none of that. Um, he flips out and he's like, you do not ever talk about this ever, ever again. We are not talking about this. Um, and then we go back to Jazz and he goes back to the story of how the Autobots got betrayed. And he says that after um, they had lost to the Decepticons, they were all really beaten and battered. And the Decepticons tell the group of Autobots that they had been betrayed. And it's funny because in one of the panels you just see Ironhide's head go whoop, right over to Mirage. And Jazz is like, oh, I wish Prime didn't have to hear that. So then the Decepticons kind of get all of the Autobots together and they're planning on sending them through this wormhole that'll send them to be eaten by the swarm. And as they're going, um, Optimus kind of fights back and he destroys the machine and closes the hole. Um, but whatever he did, um, to do that almost kills him. So that obviously puts Optimus in the position that we saw him in issue one, as in, like, not alive, almost. And Jazz says that basically things have just not gotten any better after that. So then we go back to Suntrigger, who's, like, all upset, and he's, you know, oh, I'm so mad, and he's walking around, and Ironhide stops him and says, what's wrong? And Suntrigger says, you know, Sideswipe thinks that we need to leave this alone. Um, that you're going too far and we can't do this anymore. And Ironhide, he just can't control himself anymore. And he says, follow me. And they go to find Mirage. And Ironhide then beats the ever-loving crap out of Mirage. Um, yeah, by the end, Mirage is not looking good. There's an interesting point where Ironhide destroys the um, Autobot symbol on Mirage's chest and says, you don't deserve to wear this. And um, he says, you know, it's all Mirage's fault that Optimus is dying. And Mirage tries to say, no, it wasn't me, but Ironhide kicks him in the face, and that is the last we hear of Mirage. And that's the issue. This issue was really good. I like this issue a lot. Um, it does a good job of answering kind of the biggest question of the series uh, so far, and that is, how did the Autobots get to where they are and what happened to Optimus Prime? And how did Megatron get the Matrix? He just took it. He just was like, I'm gonna be having this, Kate, thanks. Um, I think it is also really nice to see what's going on with Thundercracker and also to see um, where the Insecticons came from and how Bombshell was the first one to be made. Um, I'm interested to see if that, how far this goes. So there's a couple of things that now I'm interesting to see where that goes. Not to mention the human storyline. Um, 
so I'm hoping that we don't get too much stuff kind of all crammed into the last couple of issues because that'd be kind of annoying. Obviously we get to see Ironhide kind of take out his um, revenge, I guess, on Mirage. Still don't know if he's actually the traitor or not, though Jazz's story sure seems to imply that he is. Um, but yeah, good issue. The best thing about this issue is it's setting up for another good issue. Um, I have to say the second half of the series is already way better than the first two or three issues of the last half of this series. So that's that. Um, I did want to say that I will be making a couple of videos um, coming up that aren't my reviews, um, but I'm trying to complain a couple of special things. First of all, I have my video on the Michael Bay movieverse coming up and my thoughts on that and what I'm expecting and excited for and not quite excited for in Revenge of the Fallen. And after that, I think I'm going to be making, um, someone asked me what my favorite, top five favorite Transformers were, so I'm probably going to make a video about that. Um, obviously I have nine coming up. Um, and besides those videos, I am very excited because I have recently started going through a box of old comic books that I have inherited from my father. Um, so I'm very excited. I kind of want to talk about these, um... There's a lot of Iron Man in here, some Fantastic Four, um, Thor, and Daredevil. Um, those are the kind of the major ones that he has. There's a couple other things. There's some Spider-Man in there. Um, but so I'm very excited to talk about these because I think they're really cool. And of course I also have my um, Transformers Generations video at some point. So I have a lot of stuff planned, a lot of fun stuff for you. Um, but I also still have 8 and 9 to review. So... Hopefully um, this week I'm going to have a lot of extra time. I'll be able to get those all out for you guys. Um, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, if you did and you're not subscribed yet, you should probably subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Um, and sub subscribing would make you kind of the coolest person ever. And you really want to be the coolest person ever. I know. I can tell. Um, so that's it. Um, hope to see you guys again for my review of All Hail Megatron number 8.